I'm based here in Christchurch. Um, I've got the privilege to be able to uh, bring th three pretty amazing people together tonight just to be able to talk about um, all things wellbeing. Um, it's quite a, a, a likely sort of time to be doing this too in, 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 in lockdown, uh, you know, a second lockdown. And I was just talking to Ali earlier on, we're talking about um, well-being and, 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 and mental health for our young people, we're not so young as well. So it's about for the next sort of 40, 50 minutes, bringing it together. Uh, currently, just apologies for Kane. Kane's had a wee bit of technical um, difficulties and he's actually driving his walker to another neighbour to be able to get some reception. So he must live somewhere in the WAPS up north, I reckon. But um, kia ora. Thank you for having me. So. Just a wee bit of who I am. I um I fuck a papa. Um I'm from Canterbury, Canterbury boy, born in the Waikato, but fuck a papa here. Um in a wee place north of um Christchurch called Ring, you uh, grew up there. And my first piece of my um journey after high school was actually in the ag sector and I was 14 years in the Nahiri as a forestry worker. So um a silver culturalist. So and I moved to university at 28, 29, and for the last 19 years I've been in the uh, well-being and mental health space in Otatahi Christchurch. And um, I'm currently been out for the last two years doing my own thing. So I do lots of um, well-being in the workplace, a lot of mental health, and I work closely with, my passion is young people. I was just saying that to Ali earlier on. Um, and I currently work alongside Master Plumber and I sort of, I'm the well-being guy for about 280 um, apprentice in the plumbing area all across Aotearoa, which I love doing. Um, so welcome. And this is going to be chilled, relaxed, hopefully um, with Kane on board. We've got these three incredible people. I'm going to introduce them uh, quickly. Now I'm going to start from the deep south. Um, Tani, uh, sorry, Aroha mai, Tanaroa Walker. Um, he is um, uh, just going to, sorry, I've forgotten. Farm for life, bro. And I've looked at your, I jumped on a YouTube video of you and Kane together, and there's lots of fuck words. Can you say the F word? But awesome, awesome hour of, um, and your following is huge, bro. And what you're doing in the farming and ag sector is just incredible. Um, welcome. No, my hurry, my bro. Um, Kia ora, bro. Left is we got the lovely Ali Perium. Um, she's based in just out of Lincoln. Um, and first, when I first caught her, when I asked to do this, emceeing for tonight um i looked researched ali today and said oh my god i watched you two years ago or three years ago on country calendar um because that's one of my favorite shows so welcome and your amazing um i don't know your social media presence is walter um you know walter live um it's incredible and um yeah it just gives me goosebumps thinking what you've done and what you're doing and continue to do so welcome name my honey my i want to choose kane Hopefully, when he gets here, but Kane is from the Naki, eh? Is he a Naki boy? I think he's a Naki yeah, boy. Bro. We won't hold that against him. He's on that east coast <laughs> by the big mountain. But um, he's, oh, just watching some of his stuff too today, um, farm fit and some of the outdoor Jake the Mus, um Rocky. Hey, take it off. Take it off. Not okay. <laughs> I was just, your, your intro was impeccable, bro. I was just, I was just introducing you. I was listening in, mate. I just wanted to <laughs> in here. I'm, I'm in a I'm in a girl's bedroom. Not be <laughs> honest with Quines. Must be doing something right, eh? Um, <laughs> Kilda, guys. This is not about me. It's about <laughs> you three. So, welcome these incredible people and doing some incredible things in the ag sector. Um, look, this is about opening it up to the wow. It just keeps climbing. 228, 230 um, people online to spare wow. one here at Corridor. I'm not too sure. Look, it's just about, this is about being um, relaxed. And look, at the end of the day, too, some of the stuff we talk about can bring up a wee bit of, a wee bit of shit because it's hard, to, it's hard to sugarcoat mental health and how we think and feel. So just, um, you know, no question is no wrong question. There's no dumb question. Um, look, it can stir some stuff up, guys. So if you're thinking you need a wee bit more um, post this coil or this yarn, um, look, there's my website, and I do have a, a um, Facebook page too. So just leave a message, and I can just check in with you or whoever tomorrow. Or um, probably one of my skill sets too is even though we're all across the country, I do have a good knowledge of where 
our pathways if you're needing some help too. So kia ora. We'll leave it at that. So how do we work with this, Danny? Are you still there with us or should we just open it up? Who wants to crack? Who wants to start it off? <laughs> how do we do this? <laughs> Well, I've got a couple of questions, Kiyama. Um, Kia ora. Bro, so, what, so what's your what's your background, bro? Like, um, obviously, we are in the wellness space. You want to just uh, can you give me a bit yeah, of an yeah, understanding yeah, of the yeah, weapons that you've got and your Kia artillery? Uh, yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, I left school very young, fourteen. I hated school, um, and we went straight into the in, in, into the forestry or North Canterbury Forest. Moved into moved to we, we went to social work. So I'm a social worker by trade, but in the last sort of 15, 16 years, my my thing has been, I've been across the DHB, so with the hospital setting, but in the wellbeing space, um, for the last eight, nine years, I've been working with youth, so 13 to 25, all in mental health and the youth justice as well. So doing lots of um, stuff in what we call our youth juvies, um, working alongside some of that addiction and alcohol and drug issues as well. But um, for the last sort of three years, Tanaro, I've been um, sort of just working alongside our young people with Master Plumber um, and doing lots of sort of more corporate stuff now and working alongside um, organisations that are struggling with their staff around wellbeing and getting a sense of how we can sort of, or I can provide some tools for the kit. Um, um, yeah, so when I do see our young people, like for, for an example, I was in Wellington two weeks ago and I had a team of about nine young people up there. There'd been a sort of a sudden death up there. So I went up there just to talk to the team and just to look at sort of um, checking in and getting a sense of, you know, because my thing, I think, Tanada, is that we still don't, as as Kiwi males, we still hold it in here. We don't put our hand up and say, actually, I'm not feeling okay. Um, yeah. I was saying to Ali earlier on, you know, my dad's 83, so that's eight generations, and they didn't talk about their feelings then. And for me, being a Gen X, so I don't know, 1920 in the late 80s, again, too, was hard in the fuck up, excuse my language. Um, and now this yeah. generation, what we call our millennials or our Gen Zs coming through, we still have our, our, you know, Kiwis, males especially, have that tense of stuff that I'm all right, bro. Nothing wrong with me, bro. So it's about how can we get our young people to put their hand up and say, actually, I do need a... I do need to reach out. Yeah, so that's sort of my current space as well, being which I'm quite passionate about. Cool. Bang, bro. Bang. Awesome. And um, I was just saying to Tanaroa Kane, I was watching a video with you guys today. Um, I think um, Tanaroa was in his ute and you were at home and you just had that great corridor. I think you were introducing who you oh, were yeah, with as nice. well. It was awesome, eh? Yeah, um, yeah, just real Absolutely. stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's so. that's that's the key, isn't it? Is is keeping it real and and honest. Like yeah. that's modelling what we need to see from everyone, isn't it? So it's um, it's not easy to do for anyone, but you know, the more people do it. Oh, exactly. And just sort of doing some research bit. today, guys, around sort of you know what you guys from your social media presence and and um, looking some of that farm fit. Um, YouTube videos too, Kane. You know, it's all about that five things of well-being, that really healthy mm. stuff we have. Um, I'm just getting told by the boss. <laughs> oh, is there a panel question? <laughs> Kane, can you make sure to um, talk about your table today? Oh, table. <laughs> the um, oh, the dinner table. sorry. Yeah. Table. So to read out the panel discussion question, there's a need to strike a balance for that one. Sorry, guys, I'm going to be very serious here now. There is a need to strike a balance between prevention and treatment in resource-limited settings. What does that mean? Oh, that's that's oh. So do you know what I mean by that? Say it again, sorry. So there is a need to strike mm. a balance between prevention and treatment in, res in resource-limited settings. Yeah. And mental health. So... Yeah, is there anything that you sort of want to add to that? Well, I'd, from my point of view, I don't think there's anywhere near enough prevention. Um, we're all ambulance at the bottom of the cliff sort of stuff, really, aren't we? Which 
it's hard because there's that many people falling off the cliff that we need a lot of ambulances down there but it's way easier to put the fence up the top um you know so a lot of money goes to those ambulances um and not a much not much on the fence yeah yeah and and i think um you know yeah that's a good that's a good answer because we tend to focus a lot more on on not having the ambulance at the at the um top of the cliff where you can actually sort of um educate and oh, it's around that harm reduction eh? it's around being able to sort of say um um you know what can we do to prevent things that get to that that, yeah, that end up at that that, that hard end yeah <laughs> Sorry, Ellie, you're breaking up. I've got messages and shit, all sorts coming through. Oh, I know, I've got heats now, sorry. I've had the technical <laughs> guys sit beside me. Actually, I must, um, Aroha, my two guys, I'm actually, um, so my part of my role too is my wife's the CEO of Young Farmers, so please out there, don't hold that against me. So it's just, okay. let's have a look at some of these questions, eh? Um, I'll, I'll add on to what you said about prevention um, versus treatment. Um Unfortunately, with a lot of prevention, it's like how early do you start? Um, to be honest, a lot of, um, well, my first mental health issues started from childhood. I know many do. Um, and it's sort of like, how do we actually reparent ourselves um, as adult children? Um, because a lot of core beliefs um, are made between the first seven years of life. So whatever happened within those first seven years you'll go throughout the rest of your life believing it so if you were you know told you weren't good enough you were ugly you know um and you will you'll carry it with you and you get to a certain age where um sometimes when you do go to a counselor or a healer or something they will actually question you more about your first 10 years of life than they will the last five years that you've been struggling because sometimes it, little things keep adding 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 on and then you're an adult and now you've got to unpack the last 20 years of stuff so when it comes to prevention it, it can start as like um soon as conscious parenting and um just knowing you know like little things like that so i find prevention so um so hard and um i really yeah because obviously we're all we're just seeing people that are um of need of help and you know at the bottom of the cliff um most of the time but yeah it's slowly unpacking <laughs> yeah that's yeah. what i thought yeah but if anyone has any sort of ideas on where to start with prevention um yeah the first good thing is awareness though isn't it and just sharing our stories as publicly and openly as we can to try and get more people to do the same yeah yeah opening up yeah, we're, um, to that. yeah I've, I've um so i think that there's a lot of gold to be found between the top of the cliff and the bottom of the cliff. Yeah. I think there's a lot of gold there. And and what I mean by that is a lot of people that have, uh, you know, obviously tried to commit suicide, failed, um, but are still alive to tell the story. I don't think we are picking their brains as much as we probably could. So we're going to start that conversation. We've got about maybe 11 people lined up from around New Zealand um, who are willing to tell their story about literally the, the, the mindset that they have as they're going into it and then obviously the mindset that they have after it after it and uh their perceived opinion of what um what they thought was going to feel like um as they went into mm. it so i think there's a lot of gold to be to be uh sucked up there so yeah i suppose it's about conversation and this is bloody awesome to be starting it right now with um with you three and um and getting it out there to the world um to, to just get kick started eh, and start talking about it because we, we've, we've all got feelings yeah 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 now and you know when i think about you know finding that lived experience with someone and and, and you're right ali because when you have that you know because everything's learned behavior for me anyway you know when i think about because people mm. always ask me oh do you have a mental health issue and for me um personally i say actually no i i, I don't I, I i get low i get down but the thing that i learned for me was anger so you know monkey see monkey do with my dad so for me growing up um watching my dad be verbally not 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 ever physically aggressive but verbally aggressive to my to my mother you know after a couple of beers too so i learned that behavior and then take it into my relationships as i got older too 
So that was, I had to sort of go away and work and, and find ways of dealing with the way I delivered my message, um, which was quite aggressive. Um, and that's some, my own self-disclosure, but how do we, yeah, how do we find that prevention versus just going to a GP and, and actually, actually you need to do this, this and this. Um, and I think if we can start the opportunity just to be able to get our young people and not so young people to speak about how they're feeling or feeling comfortable about actually I'm not feeling okay. That's that start of that journey. Mm. Kia ora. I've got, um, I've, bro, I've got to be honest, I've, I've found uh, just recently in the last like, probably 12 days, I've learned something that I've been just, I don't even know why I do it. But it's just like, it's just honestly fuck, fucked me over big time at work yeah. and given me so much frustration um, whilst in the busiest time of the year. And it's, um, I normally like, it's being an, being an employer or being, you know, not to, not being too worried about having breakfast and lunch and, and keeping hydrated and, and food and all that my whole life when, when it comes to being on farm, I've sort of been like, had the mindset of just, let's just get it done then we can go home and have a good break. Um, but sometimes that last 20 or 30% of the job and the time doing the job, whether it's like processing springers or, I don't know, drenching cows or whatever, sometimes it can be, um, we don't, we won't take that five or 10 minutes to go and have a, have a drink or a break. And, and that mindset that you have doing that last 20 or 30 minutes of that work can be so draining and taxing and frustrating and freaking pissing you off. And um, it wasn't until like last week I was just like, you know, what, fuck it, I'm just going to stop going and have a bloody toast in the in the cow shed, and then yeah. come back and finish drenching these cows, and because I was so frustrated, I was fucking losing it, eh? And um, and I literally went away, had a feed, like you know, had a toast, peanut butter and jam, quick as five minutes, smack the smack the uh, Milo, uh, and um, and come back out, and I was just like so much more chilled and relaxed, and got the bloody job done. And I think about it in like the last 10 years in it being self-employed and previously to that, like working underneath bosses, it's always been like, let's just get it done because like my heart's always in it and, you know, cows come first. But that frustration that you can have in that last 20 or 30 yeah. percent of the job can be so, so uh, damaging and, and sort of change your, your, um, your, your working environment big time, especially if you're working with other people, you know. And um, yeah, so we just stopped, had a break, and then come back, and it's finished the last like twenty minutes, and like, fuck, man, just like fully enjoyed it, eh? The me and the team, whereas I was sort of like finding myself being really short with the boys a little bit. Yeah, and yeah. I'm sort of trying to change that mindset. So yeah, and it's that whole um, like you say, hangry or um, <clears throat> stopping the burnout, bro. You more or less stop the burnout there. You know, you actually stop, take a rest, think about it, and kind of like those, you know, that farm fit, oh, that whole. Um, uh, what have we got? We got um, mind, exercise, I'm losing it, food. Sleep. I don't know, sleep. It's just they're all key think you know key components. So yeah. just function. Yeah. And it's 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 interesting. Like as much as the food helped you, it was probably just the mental change shift up there. So two minutes. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Yeah. Perspective it gave me perspective. Yeah, hundred yeah, percent. That's it. And it's yeah. like you yeah. know. You could have you could have just had a drink of water and fucking just stepped yeah. back for a second and thought, you know, yeah, it, it, it's as much mental as that physical eating, eh? It's, it's, it's a, but it's sort of like um like a lot of us farmers, bro. We've been and and like yourself, like sportsmen, with like um when it gets tough, you just you you bite your bite your teeth together and you freaking yeah, smash yeah. it, eh? You know, <laughs> like if you're in a boxing fight and someone's smashing, you don't be like, oh wait, I have a break. I was going to think about it, you know, if like yeah. you're in rugby, bro, and you're getting smashed, it's not like barely ever do they like stop, have a huddle up and then talk about it and then go out and, and perform, perform the sport, you yeah. know, yeah. it's like, fuck it, you know, grit yeah. your teeth, run it at me, bitch, you know, um, <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's what it's sort of like the mindset that we have at work sometimes. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, so nah. I don't know if there's any learnings there, but fuck, I'm going to have way more, uh, Way more peanut butter and jam toast. <laughs> <laughs> Good on you. Hey, look, guys, I think we'll, we've got some amazing questions here. I'm just going to put it out to the panel. Um, I'm going to read the first one. Kia ora, Shane Hayes. This is um, from Sha um, sorry, Shane. Sorry. Sean, I know my opinion, but how do you guys think this COVID stuff 
will affect people's mental health long term, especially farmers, as we are already isolated. Good question. That is a good question. Ellie? <laughs> right again. Um, yeah, well, uh, it's kind of a hard one because, I mean, our philosophy has always been since we've started to help farmers that are isolated. Um, so everything that we share or do is generally a lot of self-healing, self-help tools already that if you can't access someone else, this is what you can do to get your help for being isolated. So COVID um, is... Like obviously, um, it's yeah. I think um, definitely over COVID, um, I hard hope. I'd like to hope that farmers can um, spend a lot of time um, thinking of what they're grateful for and their gratitude because, um, like you know, I think about it every day. It could be worse. I could not have um, all the space to run around and live in an apartment in the middle of Christchurch and not be able to go anywhere. Um, but hopefully, it really makes everyone stop and smell the roses. Of, like you're on a massive landscape. Look at how nice. much you, you know, have around you. Um, sort of thing. Well, that's that's what I'm trying to do. And that's one thing. Um, practicing your gratitude, whether you're even the first thing in the morning, whether you either write it down or say it in your head. Three things you're grateful for. Um, studies and research have shown everywhere that it um, it's, um, relieves depression and anxiety um, from so many case studies that it's such a simple thing to do, <laughs> but you can't be unhappy and sad and think about something that you're grateful for at the same time. It's kind of like your brain can't multitask. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I'm really not too sure how, how farmers are going to, um, our feeling at the moment it's really hard to speak on generalized terms but yeah do you guys just add to that do you guys that think month. like this the second lockdown is different i was saying to ali before you guys jumped on around sort of mm -hmm. we you know we're walking we live in the middle of the so we walk and this time around people aren't as friendly when you say kia ora or hello on the street it's just they seem to be a bit more anxious or on edge and it's and it's just a different sort of wider or energy in the in the in the in, you know, in the community from, from last March, we sort of had a big rest and said, this is great. I don't know whether you guys are noticing, noticing that in the farms or your areas of New Zealand. Yeah, I'm over it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Love your honesty. I, th I, think, <laughs> yeah. I think there's that general feeling that people, like we've, we we got through that first lockdown and everyone was, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of information around it and it was a, it was a big deal, but everyone got through it with a smile on their face yes. sort of thing. And yeah. we've been let back out into normal, you know, normal life, you know, concerts were happening. Everything was um, mm. honky dory in our end of the world. And we've been thrust back into it without much warning. And people are just like, it's like we had that, it's like running out of prison and then getting caught, you know, like you get a taste of freedom and, you, and then all of a sudden you're back in. Um, so I've definitely got the feeling that, you know, people are a bit, bit, um, bit more over it this time. You know, the novelty of lockdown wore off a bit. Um, in terms of, like, being a farmer in, in COVID, I think, like, last year, I, I struggled at the end of lockdown last mm -hmm. time because even though me and my family had an awesome time, like, we spent some great time with the kids and went camping on the farm and all that sort of great stuff, um, I'm actually someone that needs to get off farm. Um, like I, I have to once in a while just leave the place to forget about it, you know, for a day or two. So I actually struggled at the end because I was stuck on farm for like eight weeks or whatever it was, or six weeks. Um, I was actually itching to get off and just get away from it for a day, even if it was just to go out for dinner or lunch or, you know, go yeah, somewhere no. different. Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, long term that'll... You know, I think we're very lucky here that, you know, our lockdown shouldn't be long. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's also frustrating to, like, I'm meant to be having a meeting with my accountant. And it's quite hard for me to get into, you know, book the space to get into town and have a meeting with someone yeah. and get back to the farm this time of the year. So it is, it is quite frustrating, um, you know. It, it does feel more isolating because there's only so many opportunities I get to go to town. And um, I, th I think that does create a little bit more sense of, sense of isolation 
um, when you're in, whether it's level two or level three or level four or whatever, it's just frustrating, I think, um, and that creates a bit of distance. No, kia ora. I think I might, I've got another one here, guys. I'm not too sure if it's a statement, more of a statement than a question, but I want to read it out. It says, and there's no, there's no name attached, it says, mental health is a big thing. I'm contracted milking 230 cows and I'm buggered. I feel like just walking away from farming, the farming, the farming from farming, 15 years, born and bred farming, 30 years, some days, I just feel like going, fuck it, I'm over it and walking away. But I go home, have a rest, have a jam on my console, and relax. Next day, I'm recharged, and I go love my job. I wouldn't do anything else. So Kilda, so he's found his when his bucket's full, he can do he or she, and he can he has his jam, and then he recharges, and boom, he's back into it the next day. So yeah. Kilda for that, a nice statement. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for sharing. I've yeah. done that um, multiple times with the Will to Live platform. I've gone to my sisters and been like, fuck it, I'm over it. I don't want to do it anymore. Um, like, just got way too busy and I couldn't handle it. And I was just going to throw everything in. And generally it was during a time where I already had some, like, was dealing with some personal issues. Um, and but passion is still there. Like, your brain can't seem to want to do both at the same time and there's definitely like times i think with anyone and yeah it's like yeah thanks for sharing that because um definitely yeah. resignated <laughs> i've done yeah. that but i'm glad exactly. that i just got some rest and <laughs> and actually stuck with it in the end <laughs> kia ora ali i've got another one here um kia ora blinda um blinda price she's just this is a great question so this is to the panel do you think mental health is worse now than it used to be or are we just talking more about it or about it more? Good question. That is a great question. Mm. I, I think I social really media has changed things big oh, time. Yeah. Yeah. Social media? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I think that's been the, the, the big the big kicker, especially likes, comments, and shares. It's like gives you a rating <laughs> of your status of friendship, right? Yeah. And how many people like you, so... But see, I get lots of people asking me, though, do you think social media has increased our suicide rates or increased our anxiety, increased our isolation for our young people? So I get that sort of other end of that of that yarn. And I'm just thinking, um, I don't know, you know, because I, I have lots of older people asking me that question. And, and I think social media is there for a good thing, but it's the way to connect. Like trying to tell my 19-year-old stepdaughter um, that to take the phone and put it down is just like a myth because that's part of their that's their part of their limb now. So um, mm, yeah. social media is huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think probably in terms of mental health, like what's I think I think the problems people have now are different. You know, they they've changed rapidly. Yep. I think probably in the last I don't know 10, 15 years with with technology and the internet probably has has come along with that, but. You know, life's changed so much from when I was a kid. Um, you know, I, I think those, I think something like anxiety is is becoming a huge problem. You know, I guess you, you categorise that as mental health. I don't, I don't know whether depression's any worse. Um, I think something like anxiety definitely is. And our, our um, you know, the things we hang our hat on, our, our self-worth, like Tangaroa just touched on, is, is definitely different. Um, you know those that 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 desire to be popular or liked or or loved, like the the older generations that I've talked to about it, they could not give a fuck if um, uh, old mate down the road doesn't like them or whatnot. And we've got a bunch of people on on a on a platform worrying about people they've never met, whether they like them or not. So I, th I think the issues have massively changed, and, and they're probably a lot more um, common. But um, I think if, if you were to have honest conversations with, with 60 year old people or 50 year olds, they'd probably tell you they've been through some dark times and, and some, been in some dark places just like we all have. Um, maybe the resilience is a little bit different or how that looks to them, how they got through it is a bit different. Um, but I think, yeah, definitely there's, there's different problems that are getting worse, mm. but um, mm. it, it's hard to... Like there's no there's no honest surveys on it is there so it's it's hard to yeah. it's hard to know, truly so ellie do you think we're talking do you think as this generation we're talking about it more though do you think 
when you you know the people that you work with do you think our this generation's putting their hand up more about it yeah i think they are and i think it's due to how many people like tongaroa and kane and all the amazing people that are out there yes. like sharing their story no matter what the consequence yes. authentic um and you know we, we're i'm actually getting stories sent in to will to live nearly every day now of people being like, oh, I suffered from anxiety. The, um, yesterday I put a post out looking for people to give me um, testimonials on um, psychologists and counsellors. So we have a new project launching in the end of September, which will be funding um, livestock farmers around New Zealand with private psychologists. So um, three sessions up to $600 mm -hmm. worth. Oh, um, the, yeah, so, and so I, to promote this new um, fund program, we, I wanted to, hear from farmers if they've used a private site you know paid for one and um yeah i was blown away i got like 50 messages that evening um of people telling me what what was like because I, I really want to destigmatize because like nice. going to it they used to call it going to a shrink like you know if you yeah. go on you've got to be pretty bad but we're saying no you don't even like you don't have to be like depressed or little thoughts to go get help like you can just feel a little bit off and still go and get help because you know better to get it early but yeah from from that um i get blown away all the time with how many how much has changed over the last 24 months with people speaking out i think it's pretty epic yeah yeah cool yeah nice one i've got um another one here from marcia um po podini um kia ora marcia how do we encourage people to protect their mental health by drawing on the five ways to well-being instead of drugs, alcohol, anger, and risk-taking that masks the trauma? Good question. How do we encourage people to protect their mental health by drawing on the five ways to well-being? Okay, now you've just frozen, bro. Yeah, yeah. was he just about to say something and it froze? <laughs> no, he's he just was. thinking about it. <laughs> he's deep in thought. <laughs> deep in thought, bro. <laughs> I, um, I, for me, I'll, 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 oh, if, oh, this, yeah, while Kano comes back on, I think um, a, a quick way, like, you know, the reason that we reach for the bottle or for the pipe or the, the smoke or whatever it is, um, is probably because it's quite, it's easy, easily accessed. Um, but, you know, you, the people that you're, you you're, you're surround yourself with can definitely change your environment um, for the better. So for me, I think... Um, you know, joining a sports team or some group or, you know, uh, 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 people with similar interests or values um, is definitely a, a way to get out of it and change that mindset because it's being alone, eh? That's when you sort of reach to those things, the alcohol and, and the drugs, and, and and then all of a sudden you're you're addicted and, and you're easily um, swung that way because it's easy. It's right there. It's like you can literally take it in your pocket. Yeah, mate, that's my opinion. Kia ora. Yeah. Anything to add, Ellie? I think that's um, yeah, I think, yeah, I mean, like, open, honestly, I did lots of drugs and alcohol very soon after um, Willie's passing. Um, so it, I sort of didn't really start my grieving process till month two or three because by the time I sobered up. But it was more the fact, like, I didn't know why I went there, but I think it was just because the pain was just so surreal that you're, like, just knew that getting drunk and falling asleep and, and you know you would you'd just forget about it for a second or just you'd you'd just do anything for like that 10 seconds of peace in your mind and I think and I and I talk about this a lot because um I feel that we should not judge anyone that goes down that path because unless we've been there ourselves um like obviously I lost a lot of friends over it and I lost like I was probably a pretty rude human to be honest um like it's it's just a coping mechanism and sometimes you actually have to just like let people do what they want and get to rock bottom for them to go up like i'll never shame someone saying oh you've been through a hard time get off the piss, get off this. because i just say do what you want um express your feelings get angry get sad do what you want if you want to have a whiskey night do it like because you've got to open it up and and really let them express but i could there were two messages i got the week of willie passing one was from a friend that said oh ali i'm really sorry about your loss just just lay off the bottle eh? and then the other one was ali i can like sympathize with you because i lost my brother 
um, you're allowed to scream, kick, have a tantrum, do what you want, I'm here for you. And it was the fact that someone allowed me to feel was massive. And I got hundreds of messages, but those two were so opposite and I remember them so clearly. One was so shutting down and one was um, not making me, putting any more guilt on me because I knew that I acted wrong. Um, but I'm a completely different person. Like I reflect on that now and go, whoa. Um, but I felt like I had to hit rock bottom for me to really be like, I don't want to be like this anymore. If that makes sense. Not saying go down that path, team. I'm just saying, <laughs> um, yeah, erase the judgments. Um, and yeah, don't be too hard on yourself because we all make mistakes. But as, yeah. if we don't learn from them, that's when we're having a loss. Yeah. And trauma can, um, you know, trigger that too. When we have past that past trauma in childhood, you know, that can trigger that sort of, it opens up to us a wee bit of that. Kilda Kane, I think you're back there, bro. All good? Yeah, mate. I um I ran out of uh, juice for the old laptop here. Sorry oh, about no. that. <laughs> I loved your relaxed style, brother. Do you wanna do you wanna yeah. add to any of that? The um you know how do we encourage people to protect their mental health by drawing on those five ways to well being instead of drugs, alcohol, anger, and risk taking that can mask that trauma? Yeah. So I think I think what I was saying before I froze up there, um, probably with my mouth wide open, um. <laughs> was I'm, I'm really big on self-awareness um so so having an understanding of of where you're struggling or, or where you're at um in, ter- in relation to those five pillars of of health you know so um that's that's the real key for me is, is understanding where i'm at and what i need to do to um, keep my table solid i guess for lack of a better word nice one thank you um, we've got another one here. Um, when you care deeply, I'm just having a look at that. Actually, I might come back to that one. So this is from um, Kit Holmes. Kia ora, Kit. If you're a person who needs food or a break, but have a boss who doesn't want to stop, how do you find that balance or get them to see it from your perspective? Great question. I think um you know some, sometimes sometimes when you're a uh, a coach of a of a, of a sports team sometimes you don't pick specific players because they're the best sometimes you um, pick specific players because they can get 100% out of everybody else and I think as like employers we need to realize that that if we want to get 100% out of everybody 100% of the time what are the things that we need to do to get there and um you know, obviously, having a toast and a Milo uh, is going to keep that, that those people peaking um, 24-7, whereas I think they, they probably just haven't realised that that's, that's lagging, you know, by not giving them that, that time. But, it, you know, sometimes it's just bloody, we're so busy, man. Sometimes, eh, and I think, um, sometimes we do need to just get shit done and get it over, get it out of the, get it out of the road and then have our breaks, but as um, long as it's not happening all the time. <coughs> Kia ora. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was, I was just thinking about plumbing, like thinking probably in the last sort of four to six weeks, I've been seeing two plumbers or two apprentice plumbers that have burnout. And I think because some of them, or some of the um, some of the bosses has got that old school, probably my generation, that Gen X, born in the 70s, and have that sort of head down, ass up mentality too. And the young people today, they, you know, the environment's different. They do need to be sort of reinforced how you're doing well, things are going well. Where in that generation, late 80s, again, it was hard in the fuck up. It was 20 minute break, half an hour for lunch, 20 minute for smoke, back up, you do your work. And I think for that, being able to sort of put your hand up and indicate or speak to your boss, hey, you know, I need to have a break or I need to communicate. You know, how do you, how do you communicate that to that next generation, if that makes sense? Um, I don't know whether, Ali, you've had that issues in the past with past bosses? Um, well, I've, I've only yeah. had one really, really terrible boss and I ended up leaving, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't just mean like, um, but yeah, I do I do find that whole working with different generations thing yeah. still a bit of a mind boggle. Um, but I think you need to take away the shame of you speaking up about yeah. needing a break. Like we sort of 
keep it all in because yeah. we think we're going to be judged on it but we're really not because if anyone came up to me and asked me for like a break you wouldn't make a big deal out of it but as much as we we would <laughs> so i would openly communicate it and if still nothing changes yeah. then you know then you you can just assess exactly. your values and see where you want to be but um yeah take away that shame from asking and talking about those things because it needs to happen and i'm real stoked that we are like surrounded in this generation that is stopping or yeah, is more self-aware probably yeah. and um is stopping generational traumas and just being like oh well dad did it that way so i'm gonna do it this way and then i feel like all of our age group are like why are we doing it like that now like it's quite cool to see that um and yeah as you were saying at the start about how you followed your dad's footsteps it's it's so easy to do and i think it's we i um i have to forgive my father a lot because i have to be like no he only learned that from someone else that's not him um and then you can sort of get the gist of where their perspective is coming in from it's just everything yeah. to learn behavior isn't it? <laughs> sure, um, thank you for that hey i've got a um rather long one here from big screen kia ora bex um i'm gonna thank read this you. out okay poor cane keeps dropping in and out <laughs> um so people are finding it super tough to combat the challenges facing the industry and government regulations hitting us hard and fast staff shortages or issues, COVID, economy costs rising every day. I often hear people wanting to quit our amazing industry because it just seems too hard. How do you guys feel about this? Thanks, Bex Green. Hmm. Um, for me, for me, I, I think, like in terms of the, there's a lot of questions in there, but um, just, just delving into that last one there, how um, I often hear people wanting to quit our amazing industry because it just seems too hard. I think, like, I hear about it a lot. People, you know, people who have committed, try to commit suicide or, you know, um, when I say commit, it's not even a bloody crime anymore. Um, you know, have, have tried to tap out. Um, and I, and because... Yeah, the internet must be going a bit funky. He's on. He's on. Um, yeah, yeah, and and so, um, just going on from that, they so they, a lot of the times we we try and strive for something that we think is success, whether it be farm ownership, um, or you know, they see people with flash cars and a flash house, but we can physically, uh, you know, visually see success when it drives down the tanker track, right, or the way that someone carries themselves, but. Um, we can't, it's really hard to feel what those, what success is and what the, what it feels like to be there. So a lot of the mm -hmm. times I've, I've, I've heard a lot of people have like put their bloody life on the line, smashing up big hours trying to be a farmer and get to be to, to this position only to find out that it's not as great as they thought it was going to be when they get there. They, you know, they've lost their wife or their family. Um, they're bloody in debt mm -hmm. or, or, you know, they, they don't own their farm. Or they own their farm, but they're tied to their farm. They can't. They can't go to go diving. They can't go to their. their they're getting calls while they're at their. Their, you know, um, their son's wedding, mm. because the cow shed won't start. Like all of these things just start happening, and they they, they can never undo the tie that they've got to the farm. So, you know, I, I just I, I hear these messages are coming in quite heavy um, over the last year with farmers wanting to be successful, getting there and finding it that it's not the right place. Um, the place that they thought it was going to be. And it's awesome to see people uh, up around where Kane is and up in the North Island going to like once a day um, and, and getting that real good work-life balance mm. and actually bloody enjoying farming and enjoying just getting up and milking in the morning and seeing the girls and shifting them in the arvo and, and not worrying about the bottom line so much and having time to spend with their family. Um, so, yeah, I think that's our per perception of success in the industry mm. um, it can be quite warped and... Um, yeah, you got to. Sometimes you got to live in the now, way, eh? You know. Yeah. Yeah. No, great answer. Thank you. Anything to add, Ali, to that? Um. Yeah, that question just bubbles up a whole yeah. lot of anxiety. There's so much um on for farmers at the moment, and 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 that's probably why we are seeing quite bad mental illness rates in rural communities because how I define depression is the shutdown from overwhelm. So it could be from one thing, it could be from 10 things. Um, and I think it is really important as Pungara um, touched on um, to s what, spend time off farm. What, I, what I'm seeing a lot of farmers is, and, um, and you know, experience myself 
but this is a personal opinion is a lot of the time the farm is the passion the hobby the work the social the everything the farm is the everything so if the farm is the everything and that one thing doesn't go right there's no other things to go to to find a sense of um, peace or relief or something like that so i'm a real advocate for farmers to have hobbies outside of the farm or take or learn something completely new um you know and try and win because when one thing's falling down then you want to turn to another thing to, to boost yourself up or get a bit of you know and adrenaline or happiness or um that's where i really like to see the surfing for farmers thing i think it's amazing because it gets people off in the sea just to have an hour off thinking about the farm um because the more you just you know there is more pressures coming in and it'd probably be a really good question um to ask someone who went through the subsidies cuts back in the was it 70s 60s 80s well mum and dad's age um and yeah, you know yeah, and there was a lot of mum and dad's that, age mate it's before my time uh, i don't even know yeah. i can't even know what year it was but anyways yeah. there'll be people in the chat there will um but I was, you know, I'd love to ask them, but like, a lot of the time they'd be like, shit, this is a challenge. Like, we didn't even expect this. And they were going to give up farming then. But then it obviously made farming um, get better in New Zealand. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's really hard to see change as a positive. It's really hard to see it until, yeah, hindsight. But, yeah, I think you just have to try and, <laughs> yeah, have balance, it's really. Funny. It's finding that balance because I think, you know, we Post COVID, that last lockdown, we got out and we thought it was doom and gloom. The world was going to end. Everyone Armageddon. But realistically, everything just increased. You know, um, we're going to use plumbing again for an example. There was no downtime. There was no downing tools until this lockdown. It was so full on. So it's that really work life balance. Like I said, I was in, I was in my burnout. I was seeing more burnout versus in the last sort of six to eight weeks than anything else. And it's just trying to get these people to you know to get people thinking around how do we find that balance i don't know it's a tough one though on the farm's hard too eh? because it's 24 7 so mm -hmm. can do it. i think our um yeah. our, as farmers our experience of lockdown is the total opposite to the experience that our urban yes. whanau will have cool. um so like our urban mm -hmm. family will be like i'm sick of working around people i want to be at home with my family so then now like you know they can work from home they can spend time with their family um, and they don't have to go to work um, where there's a lot of people. Uh, whereas farmers, we're like sick of being at home. We're sick of being around our family. And uh -huh. now we can't we can't go out <laughs> to the community and, and see anybody, yeah. you know. And, and I mean, I don't know about everyone else that's farming, but majority of the people probably only get off farm, you know, every 10 days or, you know, for every, every fortnight. And so that's just been taken away from us. And that, what, that one point. day... That one yeah. day was our, mm. our release, um, was, you know, it was the opposite for the urban whānau. They, yeah. Their one day, at, one day at home was like, oh, it's so mean, you know, whereas like they, they get to indulge in that full time. And, and we can't like, we can't go diving, we can't go fishing, um, no. like we just can't go out and do something, something else that's other than mm. being around our bloody family and, you know, so. Kia ora. Some great points. So eh? here's another one from um. There's no there's no um no one attached to this, but I, I, it's, it's a good question. When you're in your darkest moment, what are your mechanisms to get out of it to cope? Tanira. Um. Have you got something? Have you got someone something there? Any other? Any you got something, Kano? Um. What are my mechanisms? I often look to I guess my past and what I've been through before. Um, I think, uh, you know, um, taking some of the strength from your your previous challenges you've been through has been quite powerful for me. So, so you know, recognising what you're actually capable of and, and understanding that, I guess, personally, I've created a belief that um, whatever comes at me, I can, I, I can, I can handle because I've been through things I didn't believe I could get through and I have yeah. and realized I survived and I got stronger from it. So I think that that belief and understanding within yourself that, you know, you're, you're capable of more and, and, um, you know, I think when you do that throughout life and, and sort of 
look look back on your life and and you know take those learnings and and, uh, and understand that that thought that you know you you are capable um, of getting through it. You know um, you you got to be able to. I guess when the light at the end of the tunnel fades and there's nothing, you've you've got to be able to be your own light in a way. And that's that's where I think I really draw on strength from the past and, and things I've I've done and you know, if you can get through one thing in life that you didn't think you could get through, you can use that to to carry your torch forever, I reckon. Um you know, that that one yeah. one understanding that you've been through something you didn't think you'd make it through. Um, you just need to get through one of them in your life and you can use that same thought process as long as yeah. you need to. Um, that's something that's been pretty powerful for me, I think. Kia ora. I've just been told by the boss, guys, that's all. Thank you, Kane. I've got, we've got to 10 past, so we've got another 13 minutes. There's so many questions. There's so many amazing people online. So um, anything to add to that? So what, what, what would be your coping mechanism? Um, so for me, mate, I... So I, I've got a lot of like a shitload on my plate at the moment. It's overflowing, yeah. and um, and I'm letting a lot of finding myself letting a lot of people down, and it's trying to figure out who to let down and who not to let down, and what actually let down is, um, and obviously that feeling of overwhelm, um, the feeling of uh, disappointing people that uh, you hold close to you, and so all of these things are obviously fall in line with anxiety, and so yeah. all I do. Um, as, as I, it only takes me about three, four minutes to get, get my head around it. And so I just practice the, the four second inhale, seven second um, hold, and then the eight second exhale. Um, so four, seven, eight. Um, I do 10 rounds of that. Um, so three minutes, man, and I'm done and dusted. And I just, I just literally lie flat on the ground. I've even done it sometimes, man. It might sound a little bit weird because farmers are like, you know, oh, that's bloody far fetched or, you know, he's bloody weirdo or whatever. But sometimes I've been at the at the cow shed just sitting on my seat just because of a financial situation where ends weren't going to meet by about two days. And, um, you know, every I, I'm, I'm probably speaking for a lot of farmers right now. We're, we're about to go into a pretty tight spot coming in through August, September um, and overheads and whatnot. And, um, you know, I've just had to practice that for 10, 10, 10 rounds, um, three and a half minutes. And then um, uh, straight after that, I just talk to myself and I'll say, you know, what am I, what's, what's my high for the day so far or the last 24 hours, what's my low? And then who's been, who's been my superhero for that last um, 24 hours. And it like, just I, what I, what I think it does is it um, zones me out, gives me perspective, um, makes me fully aware of the present because it's literally activating my, my nervous system. Um, and, and I'm, I, I just like am able to just cope really, really well. Whereas awesome. before, I used to bloody cry, man. I used to come over, yeah. cry to my missus, and be like, "Fuck, what are we gonna do?" Um, now I'm just like, "Boom, sorted," it's and it's um, come back. Yeah. Nah, cool. Thank you. Hey, was, there's a great question here from Francisca um, Tailago. Um, wondering what your thoughts are, team, on getting men to open up and be vulnerable. There's such a, re a, re a reluctance in the industry to be honest and transparent and hide behind only talking about what's happening on the farm great question mm. how do we get our men to open up and talk when things are shit? i just think it's easier to tell someone that you've shit your pants or someone else has shit their pants <laughs> but if no one's if really? no one shit their pants you're gonna sit on it and say fuck all but if i yeah. shit my pants up you know if everyone was fighting <laughs> You know, you'd be like, ha, mine was worse. Yeah. But if you fart, like a lot of the time, people are like, who it smells there, you know? <laughs> so it's um easy yeah, to talk cool. about your feelings when someone else is doing it, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. been so hidden, man. It's been yeah. the mm. people that we've all looked up to, they don't show it. So, you know, that's vulnerability. So I think, um, by, you know, people like Kano and that obviously inspire a lot of people, especially males. Hey, you know, obviously males, I don't. I don't know what it's like for you, Ali, but um, yeah. I know. Anything to add, agree. Ali? Is anything? You know, how do we get our? How do we get our men? How do we get our even? You know, on the farm talking about how we're thinking and feeling. Um, from a female perspective, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. probably, um, just 
stop talking and allow time for them to think. I love the book. What is it? Um, men is, oh, men are from Venus and women are from Mars. Um, and it pretty much <laughs> describes the difference between the two and how they yeah. are completely different. And I know I'm a sucker for jumping in and forcing the conversation um, um, and being like, tell me what's wrong. Why I'm happy. And I, and I know that just makes them shut down even more. Um, and I've learned that the hard way. Um, but to, to probably create a safe, open environment, one, I would probably start by, you know, leading by example, talking about your past experiences, you know, what's gone wrong in your life. Um, and sort of take away the judgment as well. Um, and then it will kind of make them feel like, oh, you know, they won't judge me. I've been through something difficult as well. I've changed the way I talk. Um, I don't pe ask people how they are anymore because I feel like they will just say good, fine, quickly. So I go like, oh, are you happy today? Or on a like scale, like what's your happiness level? Are you happy? Because it's a yes or no question. And then mm. it, when it's, an, it's a no, not feeling like then you can – sort of um find out the whys and and how you can get around that but um just what, asking a question i don't know if you guys down the bottom really, ask a question and then i got to wait like two minutes before they answer because women we think aloud and when we have an idea we just ramble but men i feel like they make their decision and when they say it they mean it <laughs> Well, they mean well, what they say. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> so that, I really yeah. have to be patient and and yeah, just be just wait, patient. Because <laughs> you see that in that generation, and I always see, um, you know, the woman, the wahini sitting around knitting or 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 as a group, and and the men are sitting around the barbecue, stabbing a sausage, and just how you doing? And that's that, mm. you know, there's no conversation. Where women are just no, 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 that's great. You know, you're always communicating. Um, so, so yeah, um, yeah, I feel very fortunate I, to be a woman and allowed to oh, bend and bitch whenever I want. <laughs> exactly. Because, Kane, how, how do, do you have staff on the farm, Kane? Do you? No, nah, mate, staff? it's just me. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so even in teams or boxing or with your farm fit, how do you recognize, you know, do you rec how do you pinpoint the signs when someone's not there, you know, when someone's struggling mentally? Can um, you? As, as, as airy fairy as it sounds, probably their energy. Yeah. Um, or, you know, you sometimes pick up on a vibe. Um, and I think what Ali said about asking how you are is great because, you know, whenever anyone ever asks me how I am, I'm, I'm good, you know, or how's it? Yeah, yeah, no worries sort of thing. So being a little bit more specific and a bit more um, strategic no, and yeah. talk to people. And you almost, I think with males need a, if you can't show your vulnerability um, so that they know that it's a, it's a safe space to talk in, it's, it's being smart around how you draw it out of them. Um, mm. And I think mm -hmm. if you can pick up on someone's energy, um, you know, maybe their year good isn't their, their normal sparky year good. Um, if you can get them on their own, I think what I've found is if you can just sort of just sort of press that a little bit, you know, not press it, but, but just, I think when, when men get, get the feeling that the other person sees past their, their year good, um, they have to make a decision about whether they are really going to open up or not. Um, and I think with certain people, um, if you ask the right questions, you know, you can't, it's bloody hard to lie, look at people in the eye. Pe look at people in the eye and lie to them. So, mm. you know, if 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 you can if you can make that how are you a little bit more specific or or um, you know draw a little bit more out of them, I think you'll find yeah. you can, you can lead them down that path. It's just sort of mm. like holding your hand, I guess. Um, yeah. Us fellas don't really know mm. where we're, we're walking sometimes, so it's good for. <laughs> Uh, the female to, to take the lead and just hold their hand and walk them down that road of, of, of opening up a bit. And it's a big part of it is, is who you're opening up to. Um, you know, I think certainly in my circumstances, it, it's it's the person I'm talking to where I feel comfortable being vulnerable. Um, and that's, that's a, a pretty, I think for a lot of males, it's, there may only be one or two people in their lives ever that, that they feel that comfort. 
Mm. Um, so really yeah, it's, for me, it's all about picking up on their energy and 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 trying to walk them down that path of um, not forcing them into it, just you know, gently walking them down it and um, yeah. and, and hoping that they they they're brave enough to share. I guess. Kia thank you for that. Hey, I've got a um, good question here. It's probably probably last one. It's been ear pieces. I said last one from my boss sitting beside me. <laughs> Do you guys have any suggestions for the younger generation who are starting out in the agriculture industry? I had my first job that wasn't on my parents' farm not long ago, and it was hard work mentally. I got into a bad headspace when one thing went wrong, which then led to everything going downhill from there. Obviously, we aren't expected to know everything yet, but do you have any ideas or ways to cope with, with doing things wrong and keeping in a positive mental space? Thanks, Danny. So more or less saying, yeah, when things turn to custard, what's some good positive tips? I actually, um, I actually wrote a, a, a massive post about this. Um, but it's on my Instagram, but over two, um, over a couple of years ago, pretty much saying like, like what it's okay to like the process of starting out. Um, and I think one of the things is if that I really um, struggled with is if you mess up, <coughs> it's okay. Um, and you'll be forgiven as long as you're honest early. I used to cover up my fuck ups because I was so scared of conflict. I used to, I, I remember my first job, she, like second time I was in a tractor, I was in freaking North Otago and I ran the mower into a power pole <laughs> and I like tried to look like change blades, I like tried everything, I was to, to cover it up and this is, I'm like, you just have to allow yourself that you are young and you don't like grow unless you make mistakes and people are so forgiving if you're honest and quick early on the ball. Um, and I think, yeah, I think that's, that's one of my biggest probably tips of it all is, yeah, you're not expected to know anything. And if you didn't get it the first time, you're allowed to ask the second time. Like when I was fencing, I got told once and then I just spent the whole day on YouTube clips of like how to do that not. No, nah, bro. You just muted. Oh, I lost you there for a bit, Ellie. Lost you there. She muted herself. I think your pod's died, eh? But you're also muted. You're also muted, Ellie. <laughs> Can you hear that? <laughs> oh, then I'm listening. Oh, you're muted. <laughs> oh, no. Just say. <laughs> oh, bugger. You That's got anything right. on there, Kano? Um, I guess something that, that comes to mind is, is the quote, um, you don't lose, you learn. Um, so I think having that mindset that every fuck up's a, 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 you know, that's an opportunity to learn something and, you know, shit, I've made plenty, but it's, 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 it's yes, yeah, having that mindset, I think of, of learning from them and, and, um, you know, I think honesty is a big one with, with stuffing up. Um, but just understanding, it's, it's hard, I think, with the older generation um, because they forget a lot of their mistakes they made when they were 18 or 19 or 20. Um, so, you know, you, you gotta you got to have a bit of a tough chin, I think, too. You know, you gotta, you got to take a little bit on the chin sometimes, but, but also just having the, um, having that mindset of learning from them. You know, you, you, you only lose when you give up. Um, you know, failure is just a part of success, you know every one success takes a hundred failures sort of thing so that that was my biggest thing i think developing from going from a young farmer to to um you know management roles and, and learning was was mm. understanding that that one success takes a hundred fuck-ups before so i think i think it's definitely an attitude towards them um, and having a little bit of thick skin i think with um employers being honest with them but but having that tough enough skin i think to to get over it and you know tomorrow's a new day to start again and and learn from yesterday but but carry on is is a pretty pretty valuable thing to learn um as well i think, think um i think um 
as an employer, it's a, the best way that an employer can hear about a stuff up is straight up and honest. The um, the fact that they've had a crack at trying to fix it but couldn't fix it, and uh, and then now you can go down there and help them out, you know, because like we're we're quick to um, get over the fact that something's broken because shit breaks all the time, you know. But it's when when it's a surprise and someone's parked it back up again, unfixed, yeah. and you're ready to go, and you got your drink, you got your coffee, and you get on the machine and you take it off and you get way away from the workshop, and you go and freaking turn it on, and you realise that Ellie's stuffed it up by hitting a freaking uh, foul pole. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but the, uh, like, <laughs> um, but the best way to get that information delivered as a boss, I, I think, for a lot of, I'll be speaking on on behalf of a lot of bosses, is um, from you know, from the young person coming up, hey, I've, I've fucked the mower. I've tried to fix it. I don't think it's right. Um, can you come down and give me a hand? Because um, a lot of the times, people, the, the the young people that I've employed over the last five years, just park it up and try and like pretend that was it didn't happen or it wasn't them. And then you ask them, and they're like, oh yeah, I forgot. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think um, failures, failures, re- reflection. And um, if you're the person doing it, you know, it's like shit. We've stuffed up. But um, but you can take it take it away by reflecting on it. How can we do it better? So awesome. yeah, there's my my ten cents. Cool. Hey, thanks, guys. I'm just um having to wrap it up, but I'm just there's one quick fire question I've got here. Just um real quick, just to finish off um team. So I'm going to start with Ali. What's what is your top what is your top tip to be in tip top shape mentally? What's what's one tip that keeps you mentally well? Mm. Being being active in some way or form. I mean, I'm not farming anymore, so I don't have the the um, every day is work as fitness and, and being active. Um, so I really set aside time now that I'm behind a computer screen most of the day. Yeah. Um, and if I'm angry, yeah, because I feel like movement, any type of movement, whether it's slow or it could be yoga or stretching or it could be walking, it doesn't have to be massive or, I mean, definitely get on farm fit and, you know, release some energy that way. But movement releases stored energy. So if I'm feeling sad, frustrated, guilty or angry, I just have to move and then it releases it out of your body. It's another way of sort of processing without having to talk to someone. So I think movement is key for everything that I always struggle with. Kia ora, Ali. Thank you, Kane. Um, yeah, it's a hard question. I think probably for me, being a being a male, um, I think you know a lot of people would expect me to say exercise, but it's probably not. Um, I think probably for me is is like gratitude and perspective. Nice. Um, one of the most important things I did was make a decision to every day stop and smell the roses. I, I sort of called it was was just to stop and have a couple of minutes and no matter how shit everything is, whatever's going on in your personal or on the farm was just to find find yeah, some positives in it. Um, and, and that gives so much. Um, you know, that, that changes your perspective on things and, and if you can be grateful in the worst of times, um, it makes the good times so much better as well. So I'd, I'd say taking a couple of minutes every day to... Um, yeah, be grateful, and along with that, probably the other most important thing I did was was be really clear on my purpose. Um, so be super clear on those, and, and have a purpose every day because I think every human being needs a needs a purpose when they get up. You know, everyone needs a reason to get out of bed, and you need to be connected to that reason. So, um, yeah, purpose and gratitude are, are huge for me. Kia ora, mate, and it's just so vital because we're so busy. And it's actually stopping and being present and going, actually, this coffee is beautiful. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Kia ora. Tanaroa. Um, yeah, bro. So I, I've obviously, so I've got, I've got a, um, a gym in town called the Barracks and I've been, you know, playing rugby since I was nine years old and sports has been a big part of my life. And probably for the last uh, probably 14 months, I haven't done any of it. I've played shit rugby and um, <laughs> like I've played, played shit rugby as I've moved from a number seven to a number one. Um, I've got gotten sloppy. Um, but I, I've got to be honest, say like the one thing that I don't regret in life is spending time with being being a better lover, uh, with the people that I that that that, that I love. And um 
And I'm sure. talking about keep it I don't clean, talk, I'm not talking about making love. <laughs> that's only a one minute one minute blast. But um, I'm talking about like you know spending time with my son and my partner and, sure. and calling my the people I love because like that is one thing that I don't regret. I can go to the gym and regret going because I probably should have been doing something on farm. But I've never spent a minute with my son and thought, fuck, I shouldn't have done that. I should have yeah. been out doing that post. There's one thing that I like do have zero regrets about spending time with the people that I love. So for me, bro, it's been um being a better lover, bro. Awesome. And that's with Farmo and staff too. Looking after yeah. the staff, bro. Yeah. Kia ora. Kia ora, bro. Hey, thank you. Look, this is I could we could talk for hours and it's a shame I've got the producer beside me going, cut it. But um it's it's been a privilege and thank you for the two hundred and seventy three ish people that have checked in and just been part of this um a, priv a privilege to meet such an incredible people doing amazing spaces in the farming industry in our ag sector because we just need more of it and we need to get our young people and not so young people to reach out speak up and connect eh? and just say actually fuck i'm feeling shit i need a talk and ali just a wee bit more on that um that stuff you're doing with so you're having that extra funding coming up is that how do people actually set once it's up and running is that yeah so in the first week of september is when we're launching rule change um and oh, right. oh if you're following any of the rules to live social platforms you'll see in the next few weeks exactly how you that's can access right the fund but currently it's anyone that's living um, employed owning managing a livestock farm in new zealand sheep beef dairy deer yeah. um you can you can access the fund for three sessions um and it just takes a real two minute quick um application form via our website and then you just tell us a bit about your location you don't even have to tell us what you think's wrong um and we'll jack up we'll, we'll be able to show you who is available and has really short wait times in your area your local area um and there will be online options as well but i think um it's pretty cool if you can find someone close that's down the road um and you're allowed to be picky and you, you'll have a whole list you can choose from you can research into them and see which person you think you'll gel with and you don't have to stick with the same person i'm yeah. a real good believer as i didn't like my first like three oh, counselors so i so keep changing true. because yeah. you just have to keep to find someone that you can really gel with so that'll be um accessible yeah in september oh, kia ora. And that's one tip if I can give a tip and you're spot on. If you don't, so that two session rule, if you're not engaging or you're feeling you're not being listened to, abort mission. You know, you need to you need to find someone you can really feel you're connecting and you're walking away going, fuck, that made a lot of sense. So very, very wise words there, Ali, because you need to connect with the person you're sitting in front of who you're talking to. So um yeah. I've just been told what's that sorry? Oh, just the host, finish up. I've got to finish up. So thank you, Ali Kane and Tanara for coming on this evening. And thank you, viewers, for joining us. 273 amazing people to take time and hang out with us. Um, it's awesome. Um, and then we should do this again. I think it's just such a... Definitely. A great connection. Absolutely. So lovely to meet you all. Hey, What's that, sorry, Ellie? Oh, sorry. I said, um, if, if your question didn't get answered, feel free to go on to any of our social platforms, Kane, oh, Tanara, or yeah. mine, and just ask them yeah, anytime. Because I love that'll messages. be amazing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and honestly, too, team, out there, too, if you're feeling this has brought up some stuff, uh, you know, just either reach out to young farmers or, like I said, I think um, there's a link to my... Look, I'm happy to check in if you're needing any sort of um, catch-up. And I do... No, there's lots of services out there. There's GPs and anyway, if you're needing anything, please don't be shy to put your hand up for a call at all. Kia ora. Kia ora, bro. Thanks, Thanks mate. Awesome. Thank you. Lovely See to you meet later. you all. See you, bro. Cheers. 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 <laughs>